Hello, hello, more Dimers here and welcome to the second day of quarterfinals of Opera Euro Rapid 2021 and I would like to show you the game between Magnus Carlsen with the white pieces and Daniel Dubov with the black pieces. So as always, you know, that's gonna be very, very exciting and Daniel Dubov said uh, that Magnus Carlsen is always his favorite open opponent. Uh, but today, uh, sorry for the spoilers, I'm gonna show you and explain uh, how can you beat Magnus Carlsen you know, very fast. It's There are some circumstances where it can happen. Usually, it's, of course, it's not possible. So what just happened today, it's a, it's a pretty much very interesting case. Magnus Carlsen open, you know, just normally with e4. We have e5, we have knight f3, we have knight c6, bishop c4, and now knight f6. Now, this move was played by Daniel Dubov um, day earlier, and that, that is basically invitation for the very, very uh, sharp attack and it's called a fried liver attack, but Magnus Carlsen refused. So Daniel Dubov did it again and thought, okay, mag maybe Magnus uh, will want to get there and maybe we can show, you know, some fun. But again, uh, Magnus Carlsen went for D3. So here, Daniel Dubov uh, wanted to play something new. Uh, Bishop c5, of course, is possible. Bishop e7, these are the most popular moves, but he went for the h6, very silent move. First of all, this bishop will never come um, to the g5, will, uh, you know, not pin the, the knight. Uh, but probably what is the more, more, more important here, if White Castle, which is the main move, we could in the rapid time control expect Daniel Dubov to go, for example, his crazy uh, G5, G4 ideas and attack the position of the king. Uh, maybe that was uh, his preparation. We will not know because Magnus Carlsen just, you know, developed the pieces. So we have Knight C3, Bishop B4 immediately. We have the castle now. And as the knight is not pin anymore. Uh, we have bishop c3, b takes on c3, and only now castle. Uh, and here, pretty normal move is rook e1. This was played also a couple of times. It's not the new position. Uh, of course, this rook gonna gonna guard e4 and then push d4. So this is the, the main idea here. However, Magnus Carlsen went for bishop b3. Uh, we have d6. And now Magnus Carlsen started to play uh, knight d2. It's also very, very common maneuver here. What the knight would like to do here is just, it's a it's couple of moves is, you know, you have to play all of this just to remaneuver the knight to put it in some more active squares. But as you already see, the, the light squares are pretty, you know, inviting this, this knight to get there. Also in the, in the right moment, maybe f4 could be played uh, and attack the center. So these are definitely very good ideas by, by Magnus Carlsen. And we have one one game in the database where bishop e6 was played, uh, countering this bishop. This bishop is extremely dangerous on this diagonal, you know, especially that this h6 was played already. So g6 is a pretty weak square. So potentially, you know, a white could jump over there with some pieces uh, because this pin could be extremely annoying. Uh, but Daniel Dubov has a different idea to how to deal with this bishop. So uh, he played d5. It's kind of the novelty, but as is, as it, this is a uh, rapid time control is, you know, more as a, a weapon to, to make your opponent to think what to play. Uh, but Magnus immediately found a very interesting continuation. We have e takes on d5, knight d5, uh, and now knight Knight e4 as planned. So, of course, uh, if you imagine uh, moves like, you know, f5 kicking, then black have to always think about these weaknesses on the on the light squares here. That is uh, too many holes. So, in this case, um, you know, the move like h6 wasn't that great. Uh, so, what was the idea of Daniel Dubov how to deal with this bishop? Uh, he played knight a5 saying, hey, now you cannot do anything about this bishop, I catch your bishop. And now is the time to actually pause the video, it's not like, you know, finding the winning move, but I would like you to find the, the continuation where white gonna win the pawn. It's just winning the pawn, so it's, uh, you know, nothing special, but in this position it's a very nice tactic, uh, so I think you can pause the video while I enjoy my cup of tea. 
Okay, ready? So to win the pawn, what we have to do is actually, you know, this pawn on h6 is also weak, not only this, this square on g6, but also this pawn. Now, how to take it? Because this pawn is guarding it, yeah? So we have to do something with the pawn. So if we bring the knight to f6, then of course the knight can take it. So I hope you see that already, that what we can do is after bishop d5, uh, the queen has to take it back and only now bishop h6. And now the bishop cannot be taken because of this beautiful fork. So uh, bishop h6 was played by Magnus Carlsen, he found that immediately, um, and now Daniel Dubov plays f5, kicking the, the knight. But of course, if the knight moves anywhere, then um, black gonna take the bishop, so that's not even possible. So here, white uh, had to find a continuation of that, because, you know, winning the pawn and then losing the piece, that doesn't make much sense. So this is how Magnus Carlsen calculated here. So at the end, he found that this bishop is guarded by the queen which can be pushed here so this is the right continuation c4 kicking the queen and the queen cannot stay on this uh on this square on this fifth rank so have to move somewhere somewhere daniel went to c6 and now with the bishop d2 uh the both of the players gonna exchange the knight so f takes on e4 and bishop a5 so that was the idea winning the pawn if you found it then congratulations that was a pretty cool one you had to also not lose the piece after, so that was a, a little bit tricky, but I hope uh, at least you enjoy all the idea. So Magnus Carlsen so far playing really good, won the pawn, his position is a, is a pretty good position. Uh, if black, for example, you know, take that pawn, no problem, because white gonna have very beautiful two pawns, uh, connected pawns in the center, so not as weak as, you know, uh, some lonely pawn. Uh, we have queen g6 by Dubov, he put some pressure on this um, on this pawn on the d3, uh, and now we have just queen e2, uh, attacking the pawn on the e4, so uh, black has to make a decision what to do, now take it and, you know, uh, fix the pawn structure of Magnus Carlsen, Daniel Dubov uh, doesn't want to do that, he bring the rook to f4 to bring the defender, and this is the critical moment of the game, because here actually Magnus Carlsen has to decide what to play. So what are, what are his options? He can actually take this pawn, but of course he gonna have very ugly pawns here, uh, isolated pawns and, and double pawns. So after rook e4, uh, he can play something like queen d3, trying to pin uh, the rook. Of course, bishop f5 is a, is a must. Uh, then queen d5 with the check, and after king h7, just rook a to e1. And the idea is pretty simple. If the rooks are exchanged, uh, then everything gonna be fine. The biggest issue for, for white is that black can actually come with the bishop to h3 uh, and uh, thread the checkmate, and if the if the pawn is moved, then this rook gonna be lost. But in this case, if black are forced to do something about that, uh, then of course it's, it's not gonna happen. So from the other hand, uh, of course, if the bishop is moved now to h6, we're gonna have queen e4 defending actually g2. So there is no problem here. Uh, also, you know, this pawn is under attack. Now this pawn is under attack. And if black decide to play, uh, for example, c6, uh, then we can retreat with the queen to d2. And this is not uh, not dangerous anymore because after f f3, uh, this pawn on the on the g2 gonna be protected, and also with the attack on the on the rook. So that could be one of the ideas. But if you don't like the idea of you know having these isolated pawns, double pawns, uh, you also can try to play something like f3. And then after e takes on f3, rook f3. And it looks pretty ugly this lo looks pretty ugly however after rook g3 what can happen you can just exchange the queens and the position is pretty okay uh you know black have uh, some uh, dangerous attack on them on the f file but it's not that dangerous as as we think 
because at the end the king can come to uh you know h2 and white with the extra pawn should have shouldn't have any problems uh with continuing the game so these are the ideas for magnus carlsen to play but he played bishop d2 which is pretty logical move but this move uh, cause a lot of troubles now so from now you can try to think what would you play next and maybe you will find hold the continuation of daniel dubov there are plenty of good moves which daniel made from this it's not like you know winning move but he uh found you know the best moves in the position for for you know couple of moves so you can test your skills what would you play in this position so first move which daniel dubov played is bishop g4 he doesn't care about the rook he creates his own attack on the queen so of course the queen cannot move for example to e1 because we're gonna have bishop f3 and this is the checkmate you cannot stop it if you play something like g3 you're gonna have queen g4 and checkmate in two moves is inevitable a uh, white control you know sacrifice the queen here but that's gonna be you know one extra move and that's all so um it's not even possible so magnus went for f3 the only the best move in the position uh but now we have bishop f3 bishop f3 with the attack on the queen and also with the attack on the on the g2 so magnus stays with the queen just still controlling g2 we have now rook g4 more and more pressure on the on the g2 and now g3 uh so rook f8 now bringing the last piece to the game help your pieces the pieces will help you like Paul Morphy said we have rook a to e1 Magnus does the same and now very very important very strong move rook f6 rook f6 rook f5 would be also but rook f6 is much more solid and flexible because now the rook is defended by by the pawn so this battery if the bishop is moved this battery will not pick the 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 rook uh because now of course it's it's defended by the pawn so that would be suicidal uh but magnus have the time now to take the pawn on e4 we have queen h5 uh, we have rook e3 now the bishop is attacked three times before it was attacked two times uh, but it was defended by the rook so rook and the bishop for the queen is not the really great deal for white so this is why we have rook e3 and now this bishop actually moves to e4 uh so the queen is under attack so the queen has to be moved but where to move the queen uh the best position for the queen actually there are only two moves which one would you play here in this position magnus choose a queen e2 the correct move is queen e1 now queen e1 is a very important move uh, but i'm not gonna tell you why uh what could happen here not much rook f1 queen f1 uh black of course would win uh another pawn so black would have one extra pawn and better position uh but this is still pretty much playable maybe even magnus would try to find you know get some counterplay with the bishop before uh with some attacking chances here on the f8 and uh black and white would be would have to be very very careful what they are doing but as i said magnus played queen e2 and this is the time where you can pause the video and win in 25 moves against world champion i hope you're gonna enjoy it um while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready so the winning move is not difficult to spot uh it's a very very simple discover attack on the queen together with the check so these are pretty easy puzzle puzzles uh, magnus carlsen actually missed that and then um, yeah so this is why queen h5 was played here i also didn't want to you know have discovered too much and this way probably you enjoyed the puzzles more rook g3 and in this position magnus carlsen resigned why did he resign he gonna lose the queen and even is is the the way to exchange the queen for two rooks and then at the end he gonna lose uh the bishop so that's that's the best what white could do take this rook and after exchanging the queens uh win this rook but of course uh, the bishop is also under attack so with extra bishop uh black shouldn't have a problem to win the game also white gonna have the problems with coordinate this rook uh because the bishop controls this square and this square and also this squares so the rook cannot easily get to the g file uh also 
this square is even controlled so this rook has nowhere to go to coordinate the pieces as, as i said even you if you play something like f2 with tempo you cannot come here so uh it's that there are no counterplay uh, at all so this is why after rook g3 magnus carlsen resigned so what a game this is how you win against magnus carlsen in the interview magnus said that he wants to just you know uh forget about that day because he blundered this game really, really badly. First get into the worst position and then he just didn't see why Daniel, you know, plays here, planned this. So some blackout or I'm not sure. But yeah, Magnus Carlsen was very unhappy. It was pretty sad to actually watch his interview. He couldn't concentrate and yeah, he was pretty sad and disgusted of uh, what just happened. And I'm gonna show you uh, another game against Daniel Dubov. And uh, after another video, I will show you also uh, all the standings. So stay tuned if you watch this video now. Uh, another one will appear over there. Uh, but that's gonna, you know, in a in couple of uh, maybe hours. So if you watch it later, then you can see it maybe right now. If not, then um, then of course later. And if you like this video, press like if for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss other games um, in the Opera Euro Rapid 2021, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.